Returning to Sydney, we visit the lines north of the harbour which operated on a separate network but reached the city via the harbour bridge and the underground line to Wynyard. Toast rack trams on the northern bridge approach. The toll gates as they were in the 1950s. Inbound trams cross the road lanes leading to the bridge on the largest trams only bridge in the southern hemisphere and perhaps in the world. At Milsons Point and at Wynyard, trams ran through platforms which had been designed for use by trains. Ramps brought the trams close to the height of the platforms. On the main span of the bridge. An inbound tram approaches the southern pylon. On the southern approach, heading into the tunnel to Wynyard. Driver's eye view as an outbound tram approaches the end of the tunnel. A tram heads north across the bridge. After the trams were replaced by buses, the tracks on the bridge were not taken over by trains as intended when the bridge was built, but were converted to two roadway lanes. Immediately after crossing the bridge over the approach lanes, the trams made a sharp reverse curve. Looking ahead, we can see how the tracks would have joined the railway lines at this point. Approaching North Sydney Station, trams ran alongside the railway tracks. turning from Blue Street into Miller Street. Crow's Nest was a busy junction where the lines to Lane Cove and Chatswood diverged. Heading for Chatswood in Willoughby Road, Narramburn. An inbound tram on the Lane Cove line makes good time along the Pacific Highway approaching Gore Hill. Falcon Street, North Sydney, alongside St Leonard's Park. This tram is continuing straight ahead towards Lane Cove, while this tram turns into Miller Street, bound for Wynyard. Falcon Street had been widened, but the tram tracks remained off centre to the end. An outbound tram turns into Falcon Street. and cuts a corner at Merlin Street to reach Military Road. The depot for the North Sydney lines was in Military Road, Neutral Bay. Toast rack trams run into the depot at the end of the morning peak hour. These passengers are changing from a toast rack to a corridor tram before continuing their journey towards Mossman. The descent to the spit along Parawee Road, cut out of the sandstone hillside, was a particularly pleasant ride. 
This was the main road down to the spit until the wider spit road was built on the western side of the ridge. Arriving at the spit terminus, and climbing Parawee Road. The Athol Line was the scene of three spectacular runaways where trams ended up in the harbour. This tram made its dive in 1952. While this tram is having a more peaceful arrival at the wharf. Many visitors to the zoo arrived by ferry and took a tram to the top of the hill. Many Sydney tram routes offered spectacular harbour or ocean views, but for a ride through the bush, the lines to Athol and to Balmoral were beyond compare. This passing loop on the climb from Athol was known as Ashton Loop. In addition to shuttle trams from the wharf to the top of the hill, other trams ran from Athol to Balmoral. On this route we turned from Bradley's Head Road into King Max Street. Into Middle Head Road and pass a track cleaning tram known as a scrubber car. running down Gordon Street and via a section of ballasted track to Beaconsfield Street. From Beaconsfield Street the line dropped down to Balmoral on a spectacular alignment with harbour and bushland views. The line was rightly considered a major engineering achievement when it was opened in 1922. Some sections of this route have been used for housing, but for the most part it remains untouched, although now so heavily overgrown as to be unrecognisable as a tramway alignment. arriving at Balmoral Beach Terminus in the Esplanade. A tram leaves the Esplanade to start to climb the hill. Trams ran from Balmoral to Athol Wharf, as already mentioned, to Chatswood, and until 1952 to Wynyard. A pair of toast rack trams heads down the hill and arrives at Balmoral to pick up pupils from Queenwood School heading home in the afternoon. The trams climb the grade from Balmoral. There was no more pleasant way to go home 
than by open toast rack tram on a sunny afternoon. Three other tram lines served ferry wharves on the northern side of the harbour. This is the Mossman Wharf line with a tram heading down Avenue Road. Arriving at the wharf. Until 1935, trams terminated at Mossman on a balloon loop cut into the rock wall. This tour tram is using a remnant of the loop retained as a siding. A tram leaves the wharf and climbs Avenue Road. On the Cremorne line, a tram heads down Spofforth Street near Rangers Road. In Murdoch Street, Milson Road. For our record of Cremorne Wharf terminus, we have two glimpses of visits by special trams on tour. Milson Road with a tram approaching from the wharf. and turning into Murdoch Street. Apart from the Darling Street Wharf counterweight, the Neutral Bay line was the steepest in Sydney, and this made it a haven for old four-wheeled trams fitted with special brakes, long after they had disappeared from the rest of the system. A pair of E-Class trams leaves the depot for an afternoon peak hour run. The tram shunt at Neutral Bay Junction onto the branch line. Turning from Wickham Road into Caraba Road. and into Hayes Street for the run down to the wharf, protected by catch points operated by the conductor. The E's were permanently coupled pairs of four-wheel trams. Once relatively numerous, the last few saw their last use on the neutral bay line. Turning into Wickham Road, and running back into the depot. A K-class tram heads down Wickham Road bound for the wharf. Like the E's, the K's saw their last service on this line. These two types of trams were known as jumping jacks from the lurching ride they gave their passengers. peak hour trip, climbing Hay Street, turning from Caraba Road into Wickham Road. Most of the neutral bay line was a single track, which wandered from the centre of the road to the curbside, apparently at random.
arriving at Neutral Bay Junction. In 1952, a brand new corridor tram was allocated to the line, specially equipped with an electric braking system. The new tram makes its trial runs and arrives at the wharf in regular operation, providing a comfortable contrast to the jumping jacks it replaced. After the North Sydney lines closed, Ballast motors were used to remove the track from the Harbour Bridge and the line to Wynyard. This ballast motor is standing at North Sydney, where a few minutes ago we saw these trams operating in regular service. So ended 70 years of tramway operation on the lines north of the harbour. Before leaving the northern suburbs, we'll visit the system at Manly. Only a few fragments of movie film have survived to show these lines, which closed in 1939. Descending Parowee Road on the Mossman side of the spit, on a trip to Manly about 1935. The old spit bridge. Trams on the Manly side of the spit. Climbing from the spit, Manly Wharf. Trams also ran from Manly to Narrabeen with a branch to Harbord. This is a view of Narrabeen Terminus, the northernmost point reached by trams in Sydney. We complete this 1935 outing with a return to Circular Quay by ferry, a trip whose pleasure is timeless.